In this video we're going to have a look at query by example, um, how to write these out, how to answer these and the sort of questions that you'll be asked on databases in the IGCSE computer science exam. So if you look at the specification there are only so many things they want you to know about databases. They want you to know what fields and records are and they want you to know what a primary key is and then they want you to be able to uh, show what would be output if they give you a sample what they call query by example. A query by example is just a visual version of sort of an SQL statement. So if you know anything about structured query language um, you don't have to but for this example if you do know anything about it then this is just a visual version of it just to make it a bit less difficult. Uh, they're extremely easy. There are a few things that you can miss out though which lose you a whole lot of marks. So these are generally I'd say in the exam it's usually around about seven or eight marks from what I've seen um, for databases so it's quite a big chunk of marks and it's extremely easy to get these marks or extremely easy to lose them if you don't know how to fill these things in. So this one here is a two-part question that was in one of the previous exams. This is what they give you. It's not laid out exactly like this, it's one on top of the other. This is the database that they give you, they explain a little bit about it and then they want you to firstly perform a query by example here by stating what would be output from this um, query here and then they want you to do the exact opposite and they want you to write this bit here from the information that they give so it's, it's the opposite thing. Um, before that the other questions that they might ask you is they might ask you to identify how many fields there are in the database. Okay, The field is the one that goes down you might know it as a column Okay, you need that information otherwise it just gets extremely difficult to answer any questions. So the field is the one that goes down. The only way people get this wrong usually is for some reason they kind of miss out this first one. It's kind of, they think of it as sort of like Excel where this would be the um, labels, it would be with one, two, three, four, five. It's not, this is counted as a field. Okay, so in here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fields. The records are the record of information about that person or about that item on the left. So this is the record of information about Paul Smith. This is the record of information about John Jones. Okay. With this one, it's slightly different because you do miss out that top one because that is a label. That isn't a record about student name. That's just the label about what this information is about. So if we're looking at how many records there are in here, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So they're the first questions you'll be asked. Secondly, they might ask you about which one is a primary key. The primary key is the unique identifier in the table. So it's the thing that we can identify each person with uniquely. Well, you might say that there's only one Paul Smith, so we can use that, okay? There's only one math score of 70, so we can use that. However, let's imagine that this database expands to be a thousand people. Then there's a decent chance there might be two Paul Smiths then an extremely good chance there'll be at least two people that get 70 in their maths. So we can't use that as a primary key. The primary key has to be unique and in this one it is class ID. We can assume that this class ID is unique, okay, all the way down. Um, sometimes, so you have to use a little bit of common sense with that, okay, because you could say that class ID, well there might be four people in each class and therefore that wouldn't be unique, but it's the only one that is even remotely possible and therefore it must be this one. Um, they might not have this. They might just have student name, maths, English, science, history, geography, and they might ask you to suggest a primary key. If you're asked to suggest a primary key, then you're better off just making one up. So for example, student ID or something to do with an ID. Yeah. So don't try and pick one out that's there if it says there isn't one there. It, it will stay, it'll tell you that either there is one in there, a primary key, and you've got to select it, or there isn't one in there that's suitable and you've got to suggest one. So if you suggest one, you can just say whatever this is, ID. So student ID, person ID, etc. Now we move on to these ones here. So it says, the query by example grid below selects all students with more than 60 marks in history or more than 60 marks in geography, okay? Show what would be output. Now you are comparing this information to this information here, these are linked. So you need to look at what's in here and you need to go over here, find the information that that would output and put it here. So what we're looking for is, every time we see a tick in the show box, it means it wants us to write that field, okay? So it wants us to write the student name. 
because it's ticked. However, it doesn't want us to write all the student names. It only wants us to write the ones who got over 60 in history. If you look at this criteria record here, or the, well, the criteria field, it's, it's the other way around. Um, a criteria, so the criteria here is history gets over 60 or geography gets over 60. It's extremely important that you understand the difference between this one and this one. If both of the above 60s were in the same line here, it would mean that we'd be looking for people who got more than 60 in history and more than 60 in geography. However, here, because we've got an or, we can see that we're either looking for over 60 in history or over 60 in geography. So if they got 100 in history and zero in geography, they would still count. Right, so let's see who we've got. So we're looking for people who have got over 60 in history or over 60 in geography. So he's got over 60 in history. And here we've got over 60 in history and geography. Okay, there is no one else that fulfills that criteria. The rest of them are lower. Okay, so we know that we're looking at this guy and this person here. The final thing to make sure you understand is this thing here. Uh, this is the sort field, okay? It means which one we want to sort them by. So going lower to higher, or higher to lower, or A to Z. It wants us to sort it by student name. So it wants us to put ascending, which means the first one, the lowest one in the alphabet first. If it said descending, it would go Z to A. An important thing to remember here is that these are linked, the first name and the surname. It's not two different fields. We don't have a field called first name and a field called surname, we just have one. And therefore, we're not looking at the first letter of the surname like you usually would. We're looking at the first name. So D becomes before P, so therefore the first person is Diana Abo. Okay, so Diana Abo, comma. Okay. This is our first person, only that he's ticked, so I don't have to write her history mark or a geography mark. And finally, the next guy and the last guy is Paul Smith. Okay, there we go, we're done, two marks. One for that one and one for that one. This is a little bit more tricky. Before I start this, you need to know that these are marked when the examiner gets these they are marked vertically. That means that all of that column is one mark, all of that column is one mark, and all of that column is one mark, okay? So, let's say that you get all of this correct, but you don't get anything else correct. You don't get a mark for this, this one here because they're marked this way, okay? You get a mark for all of that, all right? So, let's see what it wants us to do. Complete the query by example grid to show uh, sorry, to select and show the student names of only all the students with less than 40 marks in both maths and English. Okay, so firstly, we're going to go up to field. Which fields do we need? We need to the student name. Okay, so you need to write it exactly as it is there. So student name. Okay, and the next one that we need is maths these will be written pretty clearly in the question if you just go through it and the next one we need is English okay we got that now it's looking for all of the people who got less than 40 marks in both maths and English so have a look at this less than 40 and less than 40 now look what I did here I put both of them in the same line because it says maths and English, both maths and English. It's not an or, it's and, and therefore they go next to each other, okay? If it said maths or English, then I would put the English one down here, okay? One more thing, it says it wants us to show the student name only. So we only tick show on student name, okay? I just want the list of the student names like I did here. I don't wanna know their grades. Finally, and this is something that people always miss out, and if you miss this out, you get zero marks because of how it's marked. In table, you must write marks in each one. You must write the table name. The reason we've got a table one there is because it is possible, well, it's extremely likely in larger database that we would have 
more than one table linked together in a relational database. So therefore, you might have, I mean, they could possibly ask you here, they could have two different tables and you might be putting different table names, but so far I've only seen one. If you don't put marks there, look what happens. We've missed out marks, therefore it doesn't matter what else we got here because it's marked like this, okay? So there we've got three marks, but you must remember, put the correct table name in each one. Don't just put it in one and assume that it's in the rest of them because it's not. Also, look out for the word and and or for our criteria here. Let's have a look at one more of these just to make sure we've definitely got it. Uh, this one is a little bit more difficult, okay? However, it's, it's exactly the same structure. <clears throat> so we've got, we'll go through a little bit quicker because we've got the idea of it now. Sofa Select is this database. It shows the, it shows the price of suites, sofas, and chairs for sale from an online furniture warehouse. Part of the database is shown below. So, the query by example grid selects all the furniture in cream leather. Okay, show the output. So again, we're going through this. We can see here, instead of on the previous one, we only had name ticked. Here, we've got three things ticked. We've got description, we've got price, we've got brochure number. We've got three things ticked, so we need to write three fields of information here. We're looking for all of the ones that are leather and cream, okay? Remember, these aren't in the, one isn't in the or, and therefore it's not that or that, it's both of them. So let's just go through and find these before we move on. So leather and cream, leather and cream there, and leather and cream there, so we've got two. Okay, finally, here it says descending by price. So that means descending highest to lowest. So we want to get the most expensive one first and then we want to get the cheaper one. So we're going to write them in this order. So what we need to write is this one first and we need to write the description, price and brochure number of that one. So that one is recliner sofa so recliner Sofa, um, and price and brochure number, okay, so price is 1,200, put a comma between to show that it's a different field now, and what else did it want, brochure number, RS23, RS23, next, this one here, so we've got recliner chair, recliner chair, 600 and five, what RC01. Okay, three marks. Now, down to this part here. Again, it's five marks, and you can see the pattern now is five marks because that's one, that's one, that's one, that's one, and that's one. Okay, if we miss anything out all the way across, we get zero marks. It's extremely easy to lose these marks, but if you just know what you're doing and you understand these rules, then it's also extremely easy to get the five marks. So, complete the query by example grid below to select and show the brochure number, material, colour and price. Okay, so brochure number, so I'm going to put brochure number here. Brochure number, I'm actually going to delete that because I don't have room and I don't want to abbreviate it because I might lose a mark. So, it's extremely difficult on this tablet, but brochure... Brochure number, what else did it want? Um, material, colour and price. Material, colour and price. And you'll notice that we've got one left, okay? And it isn't an accident by, it's not a mistake by Cambridge, we need to use this. Because it says we want to show brochure number, material, colour and price, but also it mentions here seats. Okay, so we also need number of seats because if I don't put number of seats, I've got nothing to fill in to search. Okay, I'm just going to go over the edge here. Right, so I want to show all of the furniture. I want to show brochure number, material, colour and price. So I want to show brochure number, material, colour and price of all the furniture with three or more seats. So more three or more. Right, look what I did there. Be very careful with these because I've put three or more seats and here I've put 
greater than 3. So that will only include 4, 5, 6, and so on. It won't include 3, but that's what it wants me to do. Therefore, I need to make sure that I either, there's two ways you can do it, you can either put greater than 2 or greater than or equal to 3. I'm just going to put greater than uh, 2. All right, either one is acceptable, so it's three or more seats, and therefore greater than two includes three as well. All right, so that's done. However, if you notice from last time, I now get zero marks. Why is that? Because I haven't filled in table across there, okay? Extremely annoying, especially on this graphics tablet, having tried sofa select along here, but if I don't, I get no marks, and it would be a bit of a waste. So I'm just gonna write sofa select sofa select oh dear god look at this fortunately in the exam you will be given a pen and paper I'm not gonna give up though I'm gonna keep going sofa select one more I can do this sofa select okay right <clears throat> so We'd have to assume, obviously, that the person marking it could read my writing. Um, but there, we've got five marks there and three marks there, okay? So, if you go through all of the past exams, you will see that they are all exactly the same structure. It doesn't mean that it can't change sometime in the future, but as long as you understand query by examples and you understand what you're doing here, there's not really much they can change to catch you out. It's, you've got to understand it. You can't just understand, oh, I need to take this and then I take this and then you've got to understand how it works as well, but it's extremely simple. So the things you need to know for the exam are which ones are fields, which ones are records, the primary key, and how to complete a query by example and how to show the data that comes from a query by example and that's it.